Welcome back to another Madden 20 video I have for you guys here today. Today it's going to be a fantasy style rebuild of the Green Bay Packers. Before I get into the team though, if you guys are new here and are looking forward to some more rebuilds and some more franchise content in general, definitely consider subscribing. It would be awesome if you can come back for my next upload. Also, if you guys, uh, you know, would like to check me out on my second channel, join my Discord, or follow me on Twitter, links to those are down below. Alright, so the Packers have a pretty good roster here. They have a 74 overall team. They drafted very well a year ago, so hopefully we can get, not even, not a year ago, you know what I mean. Their most recent draft went pretty well, so let's see if we can get these rookies involved. Also, let me just point this out before I do anything else as well. Um, I think my next rebuild is going to be a realistic rebuild, so if you guys are looking forward to those, maybe, you know, stop by for the next one. That would be pretty awesome but for now let's go talk about this roster Aaron Rodgers one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL one of the best quarterbacks of all time is starting here I don't know what to do with him right so I'm not gonna trade him this first year that would be foolish I think even though I could get a lot of value for him I just want him on the team for this first season I've seen how badly regression hits some of these older guys so he may go down to like an 83 if that's the case I could probably keep him for another year after this one, but I'm going to look to draft a quarterback and see what happens because I don't want Deshaun Kaiser or Boyle to start. I don't even know who you are. I don't know. Tim Boyle? Okay. I don't want any, any of those guys to start, either of those guys to start, I guess. So if anything, I'll draft a replacement for Aaron Rodgers. I may even keep Aaron Rodgers on the team and just start the rookie above him or something. We'll figure something out because I really like Aaron Rodgers. I think he's fantastic. Some say he's the most talented quarterback of all time. I don't really have too much of an opinion on that debate, but he is ridiculously talented. He is fantastic. So we're going to at least keep him for this year. I'll see what happens after this year, I guess. Aaron Jones it was, you know, pretty productive last year. I think he averaged over five yards per carry on his touches he had. I mean, he's a good running back. That looks nothing like him, but <laughs> he's a very good running back. Star Dev, 82 overall. I think it should be like an 84, but that's just me. You know, I got Devontae Adams here, a wide receiver, one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. He catches so many touchdown passes. He's kind of a freak. 91 overall for him, clearly the number one option here for Aaron Rodgers. MVS or Marquez Valdez Scantling, I'm probably going to say MVS for most of this uh, video because his name is a mouthful. He's starting at number two, Geronimo Allison starting at number three. They have a bunch of very tall wide receivers. I swear, like, the, the shortest one starting is Devontae Adams, and he's 6'1". He's not even that small. <laughs> David Bakhtiari, maybe the best left tackle in the NFL. I think he, is he the highest in this game? He might be, but he's a freak. Lane Taylor, Corey Lindsley, I forgot, Elgston, is that how you pronounce this? I think it's Elston, maybe. I don't know, but he was good in college. I think he played a couple of different positions in college, so we can move him around pretty freely. Brian Bulaga is not a bad right tackle, but he is getting old. He is 30 years old. We're going to have to see what to do with him. It all kind of depends on what his contract is looking like, because he would certainly have a lot of value, because he's still a solid right tackle, but also, you know, he's still a solid right tackle. I might even just keep him. I don't know exactly yet, but I do want to at least get a different guard. Corey Lindsley isn't bad. He's just 28, so it's going to be weird to keep him. I think I can probably keep him, though, for a little while. Jimmy Graham, Mercedes Lewis, and Jace Sternberger are the tight ends. I think I want Sternberger starting because he's a rookie, has the most potential out of all of these guys. I'll probably end up trading Graham and Lewis. Defensively, I think this team got a ton better, if that even makes sense. I think they got a lot better on defense here. They added two new edge rushers, Preston uh, Smith and Zadarius Smith. Rashawn Gary is like, I mean, he's listed as an outside linebacker for this team, but I think I'm going to move him down to defensive end. Just because, I don't know, it looks like he kind of fits that mold a little bit better. So let's do that. He may even still be rushing off the edge. I honestly don't even know yet. I think he's going to be playing right end. Let me just make sure that's the right position. Who do I even have down at defensive end here? So Mike Daniels is no longer here. So now they have Dean Lowry. Yep, somebody closed the door, my bad. Montrevious Adams. So I guess, you know, yeah, Rashawn Garrett right end, Dean Lowry at left end isn't all that bad. I'll keep that. And then Kenny Clark in the middle. One of the better nose tackles here in the NFL. He's a freak as well. I feel like I've said the word freak a lot, but he's very good. I feel like he's pretty underrated, as are most defensive tackles, honestly. They're kind of underappreciated here. Darnell Savage, one of the more exciting players coming out of this draft. He is so fast. 93 speed, 91 acceleration. Has ridiculous range. He looked very nice in college, so we're going to see what he can do here. I kind of imagine he's going to develop into a god, and I really hope that happens. Jair Alexander, Kevin King, Josh Jackson are the cornerbacks all very young still. Jair Alexander and Josh Jackson were both drafted a year ago. Josh Jackson was ridiculous in college. I'm sure Jair Alexander was also very good. And then Kevin King, he's been in the league for two years at this point. He's still young, star dev. I'm perfectly fine keeping, honestly, these three guys at corner this entire time. Isn't Tremont Williams playing safety? He's listed as a corner here. I don't know, but I wouldn't have him starting at safety regardless. Uh, I already talked about Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith, but didn't talk about the middle linebackers. So Blake Martinez here is the number one middle linebacker, 77 overall for him. I've seen him go up to superstar dev a bunch, so 
pretty cool if he can do that for us here. Then we also have Oren Burks. That's what I thought his name was. I just didn't want to say it in case I was wrong. Very fast middle linebacker, but 65 overall. Probably looking to replace him at some point. Also, Kyler Fackrell is here. I mean, he had a good number of sacks last year, so he's not horrible. I'll probably trade him. Also, Adrian Amos. I can't believe I forgot about him. One of the newest players on this team, Adrian Amos, coming over from a divisional rival in the Bears. He has ridiculous stats in this game. He's always so much fun to play, uh, you know, these games with when you're actually, you know, playing them yourself. But let's get into some trades here, and let me just reiterate this one more time. This is not realistic at all. It's not intended to be realistic. I will be trading away a lot of these players, so if you aren't looking forward to that, I definitely suggest not watching the rest of the video. My first trade here addresses the offensive line. I'm giving the Patriots Jimmy Graham, Jason Spriggs, and Jamal Williams for Shaq Mason. Also, I feel like I just recently made that trade, so I apologize, but I usually go after like the same few offensive linemen in my rebuilds if you haven't noticed yet. This draft pick probably won't be too good, but um, you know the Saints were the only team interested in Mercedes Lewis, so I decided to take it here. Giving them Lewis and Kumero. Kumaro? I don't actually know how that's pronounced. Whatever. That's the trade, you know, for their first rounder. I feel like I'm coming off like I don't know anything about football so far in this video, and I apologize for that if you're new. I swear, I know a little bit more than I'm giving off here. I just didn't know who that wide receiver was. I didn't get this draft pick last rebuild, so it's only fitting that I come back to it now. The Dolphins are getting Billy Turner, Lane Taylor, and Kyler Fackrell in exchange for their first round draft pick. One final trade here. I'm giving up Tremont Williams, Ibrahim Campbell, and a third rounder next year for the Jaguars first rounder. All right, so after that session of trading, the team's up to a 76 overall. I think it went up two overall points. The offense is an 83. The defense was, what did that say, 75, I believe? I think we did a pretty good job. We got a good number of draft picks, and I think we also retained a lot of the team, at least most of the starters, so that's always a good sign. On offense, we just added Shaq Mason. I think that is actually a really big acquisition. We lost our two starting tight ends, but Sternberger should be just fine, to be honest. Nothing else really changed on the offense. And then defensively, did we gain anybody? We did not gain anyone, at least I don't think we did. But, uh, you know, we traded away some of the older pieces on this team, I think for better value, just because we're gonna get first rounders. You know, we have a bunch of first rounders now, we're gonna get some rookies to fill in uh, these holes. Like, middle linebacker's a pretty big hole right now, but hopefully I can replace that into the draft. Honestly, the rest of the defense looks pretty good to me. Maybe I can use a replacement for Dean Lowry, but he's not even that bad. Cornerback, you know, safeties are both good. I think the team's in a pretty good spot for this year, so hopefully we can win the division. All right, here at the mid-season week, the team is 6-2, and two, playing very well. I don't really think that has much to do with the moves I made, because I feel like the Packers roster usually just plays well uh, in this game. We are on top of the division. The Bears are 4-3 and three, along with the Lions, and the Vikings are 4-4. Four and four. Sweet. Let's check out these uh, development traits. Let's also check out the experience points. So we have one experience point for, you know, a good number of players on offense. Two for Sternberger, though. Not that bad. And then defensively, Darnell Savage has star dev, if you guys did not know. Rashawn Gary also has star dev. They were both hidden. Each of those players has three experience points as well. Not too bad. And now we have to bring back some players. So Brian Bulaga is the top impending free agent. I'm not going to bring him back right now. Because he's probably going to regress really badly. Blake Martinez, I would like to bring back. Mason Crosby, I think I'm going to wait on. Honestly, you can usually sign a pretty good kicker relatively easily. Geronimo Allison, I will wait just in case he has a good season. A lot of these guys down here, I'm not going to bring back right now. But Blake Martinez, I will give a contract to. Also, the Packers don't have all that much money. I think it's worth paying him right now. So there we go. We got him back onto the team. But everybody else, I'm just going to, you know, revisit uh, those guys later. Are we in the playoffs this season? We are. We went 10-6. Just destroyed the Lions there, 31 to 3. That's pretty cool. We tied technically to the Bears, but they are on place, you know, they're a place above us, so they probably won more games throughout the season against us. I don't know. 7 and 9 for the Lions, 6 and 10 for the Vikings. Pretty close division, you know, all things considered there. Aaron Rodgers was very good. 4,216 yards, 34 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Like I mentioned earlier, it's definitely going to have to depend on how badly he regresses as to like whether or not I start him again next year. Aaron Jones was great as well. 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns, 0 fumbles. I will take it. Devontae Adams, over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. Jay Sternberger, 10 touchdowns, 720 yards. MVS, 962 yards, 5 touchdowns. Not bad at all. Sacks allowed, not many whatsoever. The largest number here is 5. That's fantastic. 125 tackles here for Blake Martinez. 12 tackles for loss for Rashawn Gary and Kenny Clark, 10 for Blake Martinez. He had a great season. Martinez played very well at middle linebacker. Nine total sacks for Zedarius Smith, six for Kenny Clark. We have seven interceptions from Jair Alexander. Holy crap. Two for Adrian Amos and Tony Brown. Why were you playing so much? All right, whatever. One for Zedarius Smith, Oren Burks, Josh Jones, Blake Martinez, Josh Jackson, and Reggie Gilbert. Some random players getting interceptions, I gotta say. Defensive touchdowns, we have one, Tony Brown. 
No safeties. Uh, two blocked kicks, Reggie Gilbert and Darnell Savage. And we have, how many forced fumbles? We have one from Zadarius Smith, and he recovered it. All right. So ninth on offense. Pretty awesome. Defense is at top 15. It is first. Wow. Okay. We actually have a very nice team right now. Dak Prescott wins MVP. Okay. <laughs> Anybody from the Packers? Nobody from the Packers? No, there's Andrew Luck. It's so sad. I wish he didn't retire. No, I mean, obviously, it's it's probably better off for him to retire. I just want him to be healthy. I want him to live a good life. But, man, he was so much fun to watch. He's such a good quarterback. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Dak Prescott. Aaron Rodgers at number six. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Khalil Mack. We got Blake Martinez in there, though, at number seven. Was Jair Alexander not in this list? I'm actually sort of surprised. He had a ton of interceptions. Wow. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kyler Murray. Jay Sternberger at number two. That would have been cool if he, you know, would have won that one. Dexter Williams at number five. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Devin White wins it. Rashawn Gary at number four. And that is it. No Darnell Savage. I feel like safeties usually don't get uh, ranked too highly on those, but whatever. Experience point-wise, Jay Sternberger, how many do you have? You had a great season. You have five. Let's go. You're actually going to be able to be our starting tight end. That is fantastic. Aaron Jones, MVS, Elgin Jenkins all have two. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I think that's how it's pronounced, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. Then defensively, Darnell Savage has five. Rashawn Gary also has five. We have two for Blake Martinez. Only two for Jair Alexander. Maybe he'll get more after the uh, Super Bowl week, but two for all those corners. Defense is still very young on this team, so they should develop super well. Okay, so the team is up to an 80 overall, 87 offense, 79 defense. I'm also expecting a couple devs to potentially go up after the Super Bowl week. That would be really cool. But here's a quick look, if you guys, you know, care. And, uh, you know, how those guys progressed. But let's hop into this game. I'm not actually going to play it. I don't know why I even said that. Let's check out the overall difference. The Cowboys are in 86. They are insane. <laughs> so we're going to advance the week here, and I doubt we're going to win. The Cowboys seem to be, like, one of the best teams in the NFC in simulation. And we are not going to win. That's fine. I'll see you in the Super Bowl. The Bears and the Chargers make it to the Super Bowl here in year one. But let's check out these experience points, these extra experience points, and the potential dev upgrades. Nobody on offense, I don't think, went up in development. Actually, no, Devontae Adams, he has Superstar X Factor now. Okay, let's go. That's fantastic. Let's check out his abilities. He has the Double Me ability. That's kind of what I figured he would get. And his uh, Superstar abilities, Double Move Elite, Red Zone Threat. Okay, pretty dope. That's awesome that he just, you know, randomly gained that. I was hoping Jay Sternberger would go up to Star, but it's all right. What about defense? Anybody go up in Dev? I don't think so, unless I'm missing something. I don't think I'm missing anything. Yeah, so nobody went up in Dev on defense. That's fine. Not that big of a deal. But let's simulate this week. Let's see who is going to win. I think the Chargers are going to win this one. And the Chargers do win. 29-23. to 23. So now we can, you know, revisit this contract with Brian Bulaga. He's actually still an 83. I don't think we have much money, though. Yeah, we can't even bring him back if we wanted to. Okay, so he can't come back to the team. I... I don't think it's that big of a deal. There are some really good-looking offensive linemen in this draft class anyway. I can't go after anybody in this year's uh, you know, free agency class, but it's usually not that stacked anyway, so we'll see. Well, if Brian Bulaga is not getting any offers, I'll just throw him one. We have $100,000. <laughs> the Packers' uh, cap situation is not good, and that sort of sucks that Tyreek Hill is here. Would have loved to have him on the team. Ryan Shazer could have been a cool player to go after as well. Miles Jack is not getting a contract. I'm going to offer him something if I can. I may have to go through and cut some players on the team to free up some money, but I sort of want Miles Jack on this team. I was able to free up enough money to give Miles Jack a 40 point contract. <laughs> Let's advance the week. Does he accept? This would be amazing. He did not say anything yet. He's probably getting more money though, which kind of sucks. Miles Jack would have been huge. He's getting two offers, and I cannot compete. <laughs> with the Raiders. Man, that's frustrating. Could get Kareem Hunt, though. I don't really want Kareem Hunt. Okay, so we are entering the draft here. I believe we have the second overall pick. So let's see what we can do with this one. I may end up trading this one away, potentially to try to get some more stuff for this year. I think I'm just going to sim by this pick, but let me just kind of briefly show you guys what the draft board looks like. So there's a couple quarterbacks who I could go after. I don't know if I'm going to target these guys this year, to be honest, because, I mean, Brett Paul looks pretty good, but I think Aaron Rodgers will be better. At least this year, I think he would be much better. Um, so there's, you know, two good-looking quarterbacks to start off the draft. A very good-looking left tackle. Let me show off this guy. Denard Brent looks very nice, but I think the dude I want, honestly, is this guy, Ruben Bigby. Or even Sam Johnson. They both look nice. So Ruben Bigby has 36 reps. 
Sam Johnson also has 36 reps, so I think Bigby may be my selection later in this round. But there's some nice-looking offensive linemen here. I'm not totally worried about that. There are very good wide receivers. These top two guys look nice. This dude won the Heisman. Clinton Bradley, so I sort of want to take him at some point. Even if he's not that high of an overall, I feel like it would be worth it just because of that potential, you know, fantastic development. But let's advance this pick from the Raiders. They are going with... Brett Paul at quarterback, he's a 71 overall. He may have a great development trade, I don't know, but I'm sort of glad I didn't take him. Um, so here, I think I would want to go with one of those wide receivers, or potentially a middle linebacker. This guy's supposed to go late though, I think. Jawara Deloach, supposed to go late first round. He looks nice. Let's see what the trade away options are looking like. It'd be cool if I can get two more draft picks for this year, but I don't think that's going to happen. So there's uh, a first rounder next year from the Bills. There's a first rounder this year from the Titans. And a first next year and a sixth this year. There's a first, first, second. Okay. First, first, third. Um, That's not bad value. I would love to stay in the top ten. That's great value. That's the fifth pick this year, a second rounder next year, and a fourth rounder this year. Yeah, I'll take that. That's fine. I probably could have went with one of those first rounders for next year as well, but I'm perfectly fine with that value. Let's just advance pick by pick. Let's see who goes. Graham Perkins, a tight end. That's what the Buccaneers traded up to get. That's actually really stupid. They don't need a tight end. Cole Abrams at center, 70 overall for him. And the Bengals are going with Denard Brent, 78 overall left tackle. Okay, so my next pick is number 20. And I think I want a wide receiver with this pick. So it could be Cordell Eugene, who actually looks nutty, but he did not win the Heisman. This guy won the Heisman. He's actually a late first rounder. Oh no, this is a weird decision. Clinton Bradley, I may just go off for, go, you know, with him just based on development alone. I think his development's going to be nice. But then again, I could use like a linebacker right now. I can use an offensive lineman. This is a weird position to be in. I just want to take this guy because he won the Heisman, but I don't know if that's the best for the team right now. I think what I'm going to do is go with Clinton Bradley now and then potentially trade up to number 15 or so and try to get that middle linebacker. The reason why I want this guy and I'm worried about him getting drafted is even though it says late first rounder at the bottom right, it says early first rounder in the top right. So this is like a really weird decision because he could just randomly go. Screw it, I'm drafting him. He's a 72 overall, ranked 19th. He has hidden dev trait though. Apparently the walkout animations are fixed, so that does not mean an X factor. 94 medium route running. I hope this guy at least has superstar. I want him to start probably in the slot. He's a 70 overall slot wide receiver. I feel like that could be good for the team in the long run. Probably should not have taken him that early, but hopefully his development trait pays off. I'm trading up here to number 13 overall, giving the Broncos a 28th overall pick, a 4th rounder, and Crawford. Now, hopefully this middle linebacker is here. If he's not, I mean, I can just pick somebody else with this pick. Let's advance here to number 13. Let's see. A cornerback? A 67 overall corner just was drafted. Okay. Hopefully his dev is good for the Titans' sake. Is this middle linebacker available? He still is. Jawara Deloach. I think this guy is going to be good. There's also this dude in the third round, but usually linebacker top three skills are very deceiving, so I don't think he's actually going to be that good. But before, you know, I just make the decision. Let me just see who is still available. Potentially, see, let's just check out the draft board here. So I think the next player I want the most is probably Ruben Bigby. This right guard also looks pretty good. But, uh, okay, I think I'm I'm comfortable going with this middle linebacker right now. He's also six foot four. Wow, okay, let's go with him. He's a 76 overall hidden dev trait, ranked fifth. Six foot four with 84 speed. Oh my lord, that is quite nutty. Can't cover all too well. That's fine. I think he fits the team nicely. He should be able to develop really well. I'm probably going to have him start over Blake Martinez, to be honest. And now I pick 20. I'm probably going to go with this right tackle, unless there are other offensive linemen available. This quarterback is still here, but I really don't want to take him, honestly. So all the other first round players are gone. So I think then with this pick, we are going with Ruben Bigby, because this guy looks like he's going to be great. If he's not good, I could go with Sam Johnson as well. I may even go with Sam Johnson as well, to be honest. But Ruben Bigby, welcome to the team. He's a 76 overall. Hidden dev trait. Ranked number four. We took him at number 20. This guy looks fantastic. And now, honestly, I might even go with that other right tackle. Because he could probably slide around a little bit. Or maybe even, you know, just stay at right tackle. We'll see what happens. I think that's what I'm going to do. Actually, or I can go with this quarterback and just completely take a chance and see what he's all about. Because if this dude is like superstar, he can play a year behind Aaron Rodgers and then come in and start a year after. I actually like that idea a lot. 
Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Let's go with this quarterback, Jeffrey Durand. I don't think he's going to be very good, but hopefully he can be a bit of a project, and we'll see what happens. He's a 76. Oh, he's actually really good. Okay, this is very interesting. I don't think I'm going to start him this year, though. I th still think I'm going to employ that strategy of having him sit a year behind Aaron Rodgers. Let's get like a Patrick Mahomes situation here. Then maybe Aaron Rodgers will retire, and we'll just have a godly backup. I personally did not think he was going to be that good, so that was quite a lucky draft pick. Now, at number 22 in the second round, wow, Peter Fox. I wanted that guy at tight end. It didn't really matter all that much to me, you know, now, considering we have Jay Sternberger, who is, you know, very good, so I'm not worried uh, about tight end, but that guy was nice. So, who's on my draft board still? I hate how that whole data reorder thing is always there. We have Zach Wise or Vaughn Ayers. Vaughn Ayers looks so good. So, that is definitely going to be the draft pick right now. It's supposed to go in the late fourth, and we're going to take him in the late second. I think he's that good. He's probably going to kick outside... Or maybe he'll just be backup defensive tackle. We'll see what happens. But Vaughn Ayers, 74 overall, man. Hidden dev trait. This draft has been phenomenal. 85 strength, 80 speed, 80 finesse moves. He's 302 pounds with 80 speed. Yeah, he's going to kick outside. He's going to play so well out there, I think. Now, in the end of the third round, this is our next draft pick. Let's see if there's anybody even left on my draft board. I shouldn't have some, like, middle linebackers at some point, so maybe we'll go that route. We still have a left end. We have a left guard. We have a middle linebacker and another middle linebacker. Okay, I guess I'm going to go with Hudson Chamberlain here. B pluses across the board. What's his uh, combine all about? 29 reps on the bench press. Not bad. Welcome to the team here. 68 overall. Not a bad draft pick, honestly, whatsoever. Ranked 48th. Took him at number 86. 84 strength, 76 acceleration. Okay, he's a good depth player on this team for sure. All right, so I'll recap this draft. This was probably one of my better ones. It definitely depends on the dev traits and everything, but just the overalls alone. 72, 76, 76, 76, 74. Honestly, a very solid draft, by my standards at least. In the NFL, though, who went number one? It was Brett Paul. Does he at least have hidden dev? He does. Let's check out his development trait. Just for the, uh, you know, the Raiders sake, let's see what he is all about. I meant to check out his stats, but I'll do that in a second. He has Superstar X Factor. Oh my god. Okay, so that was a pretty good draft pick by them then, to be honest. Let's check out these stats on him. I didn't actually get to look at them. So he has 90 throw power, 81 deep, 80 medium, 84 short. Good speed on him as well. He's an interesting project player for sure. I think he's actually going to work out very well on that team. Who was ranked number one? It was Anthony Jennings. I could have went with him. Didn't go with him. Probably should have. He is very good. He went to the Eagles as well. Denard Brent, left tackle, uh, number two overall. Sam Johnson, that was the other right tackle I could have went with, but instead I went with Ruben Bigby. It was a 76, not much of a difference. Sam Johnson, do you have normal? You do have normal, okay. I just kind of figured he would because usually, uh, if you see like a later round, not even later, just a player past the first round who is like an offensive tackle who looks very good, they typically have normal. That's why I was kind of surprised that Bigby dude didn't. Um, but let me also check out this other wide receiver. It was Cordell Eugene. He's a 75 overall. He has hidden dev trait as well, so let's check out this development on him. But first off, he has 92 speed, 6 foot 3 on the Lions, so I already have a good wide receiver core. All right, well, what is his dev? Am I going to regret this? I really hope not. He has star. Okay. Hopefully our guy has superstar. He won the Heisman, so I feel like there's a pretty good shot at him getting superstar. All right, the team have regressed a little bit, so it's an 80 overall. It's not as high of an overall as it was last year, but I think this team got a little bit better for the future, at least. Because now we have Jeffrey Durand, 76 overall. We're going to figure out his dev at the end of the season. Bradley could potentially develop into a beast. I'm expecting him to at least have Superstar, just because of the draft stories about him. Big B could have a great development trade. It's at least Star, though, so that's fine by me. And then defensively, we've got a new middle linebacker who's going to be the number one middle linebacker on this team. Ayers was also a late round draft pick who looks like a stud. And then the rest of this defense is still very young. So I think this team is in a great position to make the playoffs here once again. Okay, so at the midseason mark here, we are 4-4, four and four, which isn't too bad. We actually started off 0-2, and two, so we're doing at least a little bit better after week two. We are in third place. The Lions and the Bears are 4-3. and three, The Vikings are 1-6. So we are very close to being on top of this division here. Let's check out some devs. Hopefully, all of them are revealed. I don't think they all will be, though. At least the uh, the quarterback won't. So this guy is Superstar X Factor. That is fantastic. So he was certainly worth the pick, then. What is his ability? It is a max security. A sure-handed receiver is a quarterback's best friend. When they enter the zone, this ability increases their success rate and decreases knockout chance on possession catches. That is pretty cool. All right, so now we have two X Factor wide receivers. My lord. 
Aaron Rodgers, you have to go off this year. <laughs> Uh, and then defensively, any superstars? I'm not seeing it. Man, I was really hoping Ayers would have superstar. He does not. Deloach also does not. And then that right tackle has star. Okay, so let me just check out who has to come back to the team. Oh, David Bakhtiari does. Hopefully we have the money to get this done. Oh, Kenny Clark does too. This could be interesting. Aaron Jones, I would like to bring back. Corey Lindsley, I don't really care all that much about. He's, he's a good center, don't get me wrong, but I think we can replace him pretty easily. Kevin King, I would like back. Josh Jones is actually a pretty good backup, so I should probably bring him back as well when we can. But we have $37.6 million. Okay. So we can at least bring back these top guys, which is really all I'm concerned about right now. All right, so we got Aaron Jones, Kenny Clark, and David Bakhtiari to re-sign, which is fine. So I'm going to spend my coach experience, and I will see you at the end of the season. So we missed out on the playoffs this year. That is quite sad. What was the record? We went 8-8. Eight and eight. All right, 10-5-1 and one for the Bears, 10-6 and six for the Lions, 4-12 and 12 for the Vikings. That sucks, but hopefully the rookies played well. So Aaron Rodgers was pretty good here once again. He had 4,161 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Not bad, really, at all. Let's check out the running back. Aaron Jones, over 1,000 yards again, 9 touchdowns, almost 4 yards per carry. He's still playing well. I'm good with it. The wide receivers, Devontae Adams, 88 catches, 975 yards, 5 touchdowns. But Clinton Bradley, 10 receiving touchdowns, 902 yards. Let's go. Jay Sternberger, also playing very well. MVS even got 6 touchdowns. Not too bad there. So the offense seemed okay. Elgin Jenkins played pretty badly, but everybody else was great on the offensive line. 107 tackles here for Deloach, the rookie. We have 17 tackles for loss for Rashawn Gary, 15 for Vaughn Ayers, 12 for Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark had 8 sacks at nose tackle, that's quite good. Interceptions, we have 3 for Josh Jackson, 1 from Deloach, 1 for Adrian Amos, Kevin King, and Jair Alexander. Darnell Savage isn't really getting any interceptions. Hopefully he's still developing though. 0 touchdowns, 1 safety from Kenny Clark, who also had a blocked kick. Alright, and he forced fumbles. We have 2, Josh Jackson, Deloach got 1, and then fumble recoveries, we don't have any. So hopefully we at least get, you know, Defensive Rookie of the Year. I feel like that should be good. Offensive Rookie of the Year, maybe, our wide receiver. So first again on defense, man. This defense is actually kind of nasty. Cam Newton wins MVP. Anybody from the Packers? I don't see anyone. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Cam Newton. Anybody from the Packers? No. Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack wins it. And then Offensive Rookie of the Year, Clinton Bradley is going to win. And he has X Factor. This could be huge. That other wide receiver came in second. Ha, I get wrecked. <laughs> uh, we also have Jeffrey Durant here. The backup quarterback is at number seven. Okay. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Deloach. Okay, that's fantastic. Von Ayer is at number four. Hudson Chamberlain at number eight. I will take it. Okay, so this season wasn't great in the record department, but honestly, we were, what, 13th on offense, first on defense. It wasn't even that bad of a year, you know, stat-wise. But we also won some awards, so that's fine. This offense should play very well next year. I'm hoping they can all develop. So our wide receiver has... Eight experience points. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Three for the right tackle, two more for Sternberger. And then defensively, we have four for Deloach. That could even go up as well. Two for Darnell Savage, two for Ayers, two for Kevin King. Okay, I think the team is still going to progress further next year. We will probably start that other quarterback, though, instead of Aaron Rodgers. I don't know what to do with Aaron Rodgers just yet. I don't know if I want to trade him or what. I feel like he should just retire, but I don't think he's going to. The Texans and the Cowboys make it to the Super Bowl this year, but let me also just check out potential dev upgrades. I love looking at this stuff, man. Anybody go up in development? I don't think so, but our freaking wide receiver has 11 experience points. My god, that went up even more. That's hilarious. Oh, this guy only has star, which is fine. I think I'm still going to start him next year. I feel like he is still the quarterback of the future for this team, considering Aaron Rodgers may even be in the 70s after this year, to be honest. And then defensively, nobody went up in dev. We have six for Deloach now. Not bad at all. Okay, we'll simulate this week. Let's see who can win the Super Bowl. Between the Cowboys and the Texans, my money's on the Cowboys. And the Cowboys will be victorious, 28 to 21 there. The top player who I can bring back right now is Corey Lindsley, and he's a 79 overall. Man, I really don't want him on the team. Kevin King is an interesting one as well. He's only a 78. I feel like I can get a better corner in free agency. And I don't really want to waste my money on him right now. How much does Josh Jones want? He doesn't want much, but we don't have much. So I'm not going to bring him back either. I'm just going to wait. And let's advance the week to go into free agency. Man, the Packers have such an interesting cap situation. They don't have like any money to bring in players. We have $6.42 million. I don't even think we can get anyone. Trent Williams is the top player. Brandon Brooks is also here. He could help out a little bit. Samson Abukum could also help out a little bit. But, I mean, Preston Smith isn't that bad, honestly. Let me see if there are any cornerbacks here who I'd want. And there's some guys down here who aren't bad, like Holton Hill. Isn't that bad? 
I think I'm just going to go after him just because he's probably cheaper than the rest. And we're going to see if we can draft a corner this year or something because he's not too bad. I'm fine with him coming in on this team. And then I really want to go after Brandon Brooks, to be honest. I think I am for this last season. I know he's 32 and it doesn't really make that much sense. But, you know, we're going to get a solid guard who can play left guard. We're going to slide Elston Jenkins to center where I'm pretty sure he played in college at least for a little bit. So I think I'm good with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't think I'm going after anybody else here. All right. Let's see. Did we get the players we went after? We got Holton Hill and we got Brandon Brooks. Awesome. I think that's going to help out the team a ton. All right. I think I'm just going to sim to my draft pick here at number 15 and see who we can land. I don't really like want anybody in particular here. So let's just see who's available. Doesn't really look like anybody good is available. All right, this is going to be an interesting draft pick. Uh, could go corner. Benji Bennett, 7.5 combine grade. Should I take him now? He's supposed to go in the mid-second. I might be able to get him in the second with the fifth pick, but he's probably not even going to be there, to be honest. All right, let me look around a little bit, I guess. Honestly, there's like nobody who I want in this you know draft class right now. So I'm going to go with this cornerback, Benji Bennett. 75 with hidden. Wow. That's a pretty good draft pick. I feel like he should play somewhere then. All right, I think I'm going to start him at, you know, some cornerback position. And now, my first pick in the second round will be the best pick in the entire draft. Are you ready for this, guys? You're not ready. I can tell you that much right now. Jordan McCain, welcome. 68. Man, okay. <laughs> he skipped the combine, so I figured I'd go with him. He's not too good, but a 68 overall really isn't that bad, you know, in this year's Madden. So I only took two players in this draft, and then I simulated because I honestly don't really care who we draft in this one. But we got a 70 overall running back. That's actually a pretty good pick. He also has hidden dev. All right, I will take that. He's not bad at all. We have a 68 overall left tackle who's also not too bad. He has hidden dev as well. <laughs> Imagine, these guys are both superstars or something. That would be hilarious. That was actually a really good draft from the computer. All right, well, let's check out to this draft class in general. I didn't really see anybody who I liked all that much who I wanted uh, to trade up for, so... A 78 overall right end. Looked pretty good. A 78 overall defensive tackle. There's a quarterback there. A right end. Another right end. All right, this draft class was pretty nice, but honestly, nobody I wanted too badly. This will be the team heading into this last season, potentially. Maybe I'll go one more. Honestly, depends on how this season goes, but it's an 84 overall. We have a very nice offense. The offense is a 91. The defense is an 83. I think this team is actually pretty good, but I don't know if Madden will agree with me here. We have Aaron Rodgers as the backup quarterback. Hopefully he can mentor this Durand guy to become a star. That would be quite awesome. Aaron Jones, still the starting running back. He's done well for us so far, so I don't really feel a need to replace him. Devontae Adams, Bradley, and MVS are the wide receivers. And then the offensive line changed a little bit. We have Brandon Brooks at right guard. Jenkins is now starting at center, so that's fine. And then defensively, I don't think much changed on this side of the ball. Actually, no, we drafted this cornerback. And I know he just signed Holton Hill, but uh, I think I want this Bennett guy to start a little bit more. I think he can go up an overall a lot better, so we're going to see how that goes. And then Deloach will be the number one middle linebacker, and then I think the rest of the team is set. The defense isn't, like, you know, that great of an overall, but um, they've been playing very well the past few seasons. Let me also check something else out. Who's my kicker? Sometimes I forget to check this. I usually just assume the computer will sign one. That's usually what happens. So I don't have a kicker right now. Actually, is this guy a kicker? He's a punter. All right, so I don't have a kicker right now. Let me go ahead and sign one. I'm pretty sure I had one last year. I really hope I did, man. Usually the, the computer will sign one, unless something changed this year. I don't know. But let me just sign a kicker now just to make sure. Tevin Coleman and James White are free agents, apparently. So is John Ross. Interesting. Okay. Well, kicker, let's just... Uh, um, I guess we should just go with Dan Bailey. Let me sort by accuracy. Accuracy seems pretty important in simulation. Brock Washington, 89 kick power, 80 accuracy. I'll take you. Hey, we got a first round buy this year. That is not bad at all. Great way to uh, finish off this rebuild here. We went 11 and 5, 7 and 9 for the Bears, 6 and 10 for the Vikings, 4, 11 and 1 for the Lions. Let's check out these stats though. How did the quarterback play? 4,267 yards, 36 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. My God, that was a great season. I think it was a great idea, honestly, to have him sit behind Aaron Rodgers for a season. Aaron Jones, over 1,000 yards again, 3.9 yards per carry, 9 touchdowns. Very consistent for him. These past two years were basically identical. His first year was definitely his best. Devontae Adams, over 1,100 yards, 7 touchdowns. Bradley's over 1,100 for 10 touchdowns. Sternberger gets 10 touchdowns. Jay Sternberger has played so well for us. Blocking was very good here once again. Not bad at all. 
120 tackles for Deloach with three interceptions, eight total tackles for loss. That's a great season. 12 tackles for loss for, De for Zadarius Smith, 10 for Rashawn Gary, eight and a half sacks for Kenny Clark, eight for Rashawn Gary, seven for Zadarius Smith. We have three interceptions from Deloach, two from Benji Bennett, one from Blake Martinez and Jair Alexander. And defensive touchdowns. We don't have any safeties. We don't have any either. Um, blocked kicks. We have two. Darnell Savage got two of them. Surprised he did not get one interception. It's actually kind of uh, interesting to me. But forced fumbles. Two for Adrian Amos. One for uh, Jawara Deloach. One for Rashawn Gary and Josh Jackson. Okay. So 13th on offense. Is defense like top five again? I think it was first the last two years. Eighth. Okay. So it fell off a little bit, but eighth is still fantastic. MVP was Josh Allen. Okay. I was actually really surprised our quarterback didn't make the list. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Our guy's in fourth. Our middle linebacker is at number three for Defensive Player of the Year. Not too bad. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Timmy Kowalski. He's going to win that one. I don't even know who that is. Ellis Hamilton at number four. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Benji Bennett at number two. That would have been cool if he could have won that one. Best quarterback goes to Matt Ryan, but Jeffrey Durand right behind him. Best running back, Aaron Jones is nowhere to be seen. That's fine. His season wasn't phenomenal, but, you know, I still thought he could have made it. Clinton Bradley, though, at number two for wide receiver. Devonta Adams at number six. Best offensive lineman is David Bakhtiari. Brandon Brooks, Shaq Mason at number five and number six. Best defensive lineman goes to Aaron Donald there. We have Rashawn Gary, though, at number ten. Not bad. Anybody for best linebacker? Deloach is here at number two. All right. Best defensive back goes to Keanu Neal. Nobody from the Packers. Best kicker, Jake Elliott. Is our kicker on this list? He is not. Okay, that's fine. Let's check out these experience points. And potential dev reveals. I saw a couple of them because I actually stopped at the midseason mark to potentially bring back some players if I thought I needed to, but I kind of figured we'd do well this year, so I didn't want to bring anybody back. But anyway, dev, uh, any dev traits revealed on this side of the ball? I don't think so, but we have three experience points here for the wide receiver, two for the quarterback. Defensively, this corner has star dev. For those of you wondering, I also spent my experience points at the midseason mark. That's probably why they're pretty low. So let me upgrade players now, and I'll see you uh, in the divisional round of the playoffs. Okay, so the team is up to an 85, 93 offense, 85 defense. Not bad at all. Let me just see something. I forgot about this running back. Okay, so this running back's dev was revealed to be star. That's not too bad, I guess. But let's, you know, check out the overall for the Falcons. I feel like we should have a higher overall team, but let's see. They have a 77, we have an 85. All right, well, let's advance the week and see if we can take them down. I have confidence in this week. I feel like we can beat the, the Falcons here. And we are going to beat the Falcons. I don't have to go up against the Seahawks. I feel like the Seahawks make the Super Bowl so often in this game. Um, they have a X-Factor defensive tackle they drafted. That's cool. They're an 83 overall compared to our 85. I love how Aaron Rodgers is up there for us, even though he's not... <laughs> Uh, he's not actually starting. But let's advance the week here to the Pro Bowl. Did we take down the Seahawks? We did take down the Seahawks. Let's go into the Super Bowl. We have to go up against the Texans. All right, so let me upgrade these players here. Let me just do this. That's all I'm going to do. I don't want to actually go through and spend all those. Now let's hop into this game against the Texans. Let's see if we can win. Also, let me just check out their overall really quickly. They have an 81 overall team. All right. All right we are playing pretty well in the Super Bowl right now. The score is 21 to 3. 28 to 3. We just scored again. We should end up with this one. 31 to 10. I think the end score is going to be just that. Let's go. We won the Super Bowl here with the Packers. The second year was quite down. I mean, we went 8 and 8 and missed out on the playoffs. The first year, though, we made the playoffs, lost in the first round. This year, we won the Super Bowl. Let's go. I think we drafted so well in this one. I think that's kind of how you're going to have to do Packers rebuilds in this game because they don't really have money to go after free agents. So I think drafting is going to be the way to go. But let's take a quick look at the celebration. It's honestly been the same the past few Maddens, so I don't really want to look at it all that much. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you ended up enjoying this one. I think I did pretty well. I don't think I upset too many Packers fans. I hope not. I didn't really try to trade away anybody uh, you know, who was too loved by the team. But our quarterback actually won player of the game. 304 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 interception. That is fair. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you ended up enjoying the video, though, feel free to leave a like. A couple of these videos have gotten over 300 likes in the past, which is amazing. If you guys can do that again, that would be so cool. Maybe one of these can get over 400. I don't know. Also, be on the lookout for a realistic rebuild next time. Hopefully, I can get to that. And uh, I'm not going to give away the team just yet. You guys will have to wait for that one. But one final time, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys soon.